In March of 2022, what was supposed to be a great night for Will Smith, the night that he was set to win the Oscar for Best Actor for his role in King Richard, turned into a nightmare when he walked on stage and slapped Chris Rock. The slap looked possibly staged, that is until Will was shouting at Chris. The anger was undeniable and this was clearly no joke, since the usually mild-mannered Will Smith was now screaming profanities on live television. He went on to win the Best Actor award and I found his acceptance speech to be very interesting since he seemed to be actively processing and justifying what had just happened, what he had done. He did go on to apologize to the Academy saying, Love will make you do crazy things. The fallout from the situation has been intense, with many people speculating that Will Smith is in a toxic relationship with his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith, who many are labeling as a possible narcissist. Aside from issuing an apology to Chris Rock on Instagram, Will has been silent since, ending his note with, I am a work in progress. Meanwhile, Jada has continued to be active on Red Table Talk, addressing the situation in two instances, one of which was an Instagram post saying, this is a season for healing and I'm here for it, as well as the statement before an episode of her show addressing alopecia, the affliction that she is suffering from, and the reason she had such an irritated response to Chris Rock's joke. My deepest hope is that these two intelligent, capable men have an opportunity to heal, talk this out, and reconcile. The state of the world today, we need them both, and we all actually need one another more than ever. Until then, Will and I are continuing to do what we have done for the last 28 years, and that's keep figuring out this thing called life together. It's fair to say that people are not impressed with her two statements, which came off as a little insufficient. So what exactly is going on with Will and Jada Pinkett Smith? To understand the situation a little better, we have to talk about two different incidents that happened well before the slap. And that is number one, the situation around Jada's 40th birthday. And two, her entanglement with August Alsina. Back in 2018, an episode of Red Table Talk featured Will Smith where he and Jada talked about their marriage. Jada and Will are a rarity in Hollywood since they have had a marriage that has spanned several decades. But over the years, there have been many rumors about them. And this interview was meant to lay to rest the speculation as well as give the audience a glimpse into their successes as well as their struggles. One of the more interesting details that came up was that Jada did not want to get married. I really didn't want to get married, but... We only got married because Gammy was crying. But she went along with it because of her mother's wishes and Jada fully committed herself to the marriage. Jada's an actress, but she had two babies and she had to be home to raise her babies while I got to do everything I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. She but... was sacrificing herself to fit my picture. Right. Yeah. But my life Didn't wasn't really, really disrupted mm -hmm. in the least, right? And I think that was the... If, if there were an individual most poisonous aspect of our relationship in the past, is I felt that money and winning made a good relationship. Yep. We're succeeding in the world. That means our relationship is good. And I would say to him, I would go, Will, throw away everything that's happening in the outside world, your career, everything. And it's just me and you on, a, on an island. Mm. Damn. What do we have? And I was like, we have the island. This is a good time to talk about Will's vision for success. Will has always believed in the power of his partnership with Jada. As a couple, we are magical. Mm -hmm. We win in the material world. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we do it together, we win, mm -hmm. right? The Karate Kid, Whip My Hair, Hawthorne, and the Nobel Peace Prize our family did that within a six month period, right? That's crazy, so, I didn't know that. I was like, I'm parenting the hell out of these kids. In a separate episode from 2020, Will and Jada talked about Will's upbringing, which was tough. He was raised by a very heavy handed father who was very instructive and focused on his children's education, but was also heavily reliant on physical abuse as a tactic for building up discipline. What I admire about Will is that he took all the good parts of his father's parenting and applied that into his life, but left behind all the rough parts. But one of the tenets of his life became success is the mission at any cost. I was raised military. I succeeded in the material world following these precepts, mm -hmm. discipline, 
hard work. You write the plan and you die versus not sticking to the plan. This belief system seemed to have become the primary struggle between Will and his family who were rebelling against this thinking. Willow really broke it for me with Whip My Hair. In the middle of all the Whip My Hair stuff, she was on tour and it was, she was having, it was a great show and everything was amazing. Amazing. It was like, it was, we were at the top of the world with my hair. It's playing Jay Z side, it's beautiful. And she was like, okay, I'm done, daddy. <laughs> Huh? I was like, sweetie, you can't, you, you can't be done. You know, you made a commitment. She was like, but I can't, I'm finished. <laughs> I was like, I, I know, sweetie, but you can't be finished. You made a commitment to Mr. Jay-Z. He said, no, daddy, you made a commitment to Mr. Jay-Z. Wait, did I really say that? Yes. You were like, daddy, it doesn't, it doesn't matter that I'm done? Ooh. Yes, sweetie, it matters a lot. It does, but you can't be done. She came down the next day and had shaved her head bald. I was like, does she know what she's doing? Like, that was a deep protest. Yep. What it did for me is I had a crazy realization in that moment. I was building what I wanted yep. for her. And she tried all of the different ways to say, I don't want that. Yeah. I was like, I get it. And I saw for the first time, what Jada had been saying the whole time about hiding behind my ego and my dreams and my desires mm -hmm. and pretending like it's love. The pivotal moment in Jada and Will's marriage was her 40th birthday, for which Will had planned an incredible celebration that was almost three years in the making. I hired a team to orchestrate her 40th birthday. I had hired a documentary team. I right. traced mommy's family roots. Her 40th birthday was going to be my thing. It was going to be a splash. It was going to be a splash. Mary it J. Definitely Blige. Was a splash. Mary J. Blige performed. I debuted the film, all of that. It was going to be the thing that lifted her out of this midlife crisis. And she, it was going to be my deepest, most beautiful proclamation of love. And we did it. Then I had Mary J. Blige perform. And the whole time I'm like, yeah. <laughs> the little boy that wants mommy to say everything was wonderful, yeah. right? And she's having a really difficult emotional time. And then when we got back to the room, it was me, you, and mommy, and we were talking about the next day, and there were things planned for the next day, and she said, I'm not sure I want to do anything the next day. You, you can just cancel it. And I said, well, we can, let's keep it, and then tomorrow you can decide. She was like, I'm telling you now, I don't want to do anything and she's told me that the party was the most ridiculous display of my ego. Ooh. Crushed, right? And to this day, I know I was crushed because it was true. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a party for her. Yeah. There were two things that Will and Jada say here that are incredibly crucial. Number one. This next 40, I got to do it my way. This next half has to be directed by my picture. And here's the second crucial part. I actually retired. I said, Jada, you know what? <laughs> I retire. <laughs> I am no longer doing the job of trying to make you happy. You know yeah. what? You are free <laughs> <laughs> to go make yourself happy and you do anything. Yeah. Anything you want to make yourself happy and you bring your back here happy. <laughs> Just to show me that it's even possible. <laughs> yep. Coming from a tough childhood, Will seemed to be intensely committed to creating a very idyllic family life where success was abundant and everything was perfect. I grew up in a household where I was scared and watched my father beat my mother up, right? So I was going to build the complete opposite of that. Yeah. It's going to be Wonderland. Yeah. Everybody's going to be happy all the time. Come on, Willow, let's play. Yeah. Right? Even though I was saying no all the way. Yeah. Will, the house is too big. Will, too not big, this. Huh? No, Will, not. and he had a picture. I had a picture. And I had a public perception. He had the public that perception. That I wanted to project of, of our relationship, mm -hmm. of the family, and what my kids are, and what my wife is, and what we are yeah. in the world. But he was doing this regardless of how he and his family Family felt, and regardless of the cost of the success, this hits 
home for me since Indian culture deeply subscribes to this way of thinking. Parents often push their children to pursue jobs like engineering or medicine, regardless of the children's talents or interests, since success is the mission. And everything else to a degree is irrelevant. This is a major reason why Indian households are so successful in America. But of course, as with anything, it has its intense drawbacks. It's a trend that's changing with movies like Three Idiots, highlighting the dangers of this type of paternal bullying. By the way, if you haven't watched Three Idiots and are interested in Indian movies, please watch it. It is incredible. Okay, back to Will Smith, who was clearly being pushed to, but struggling to let go of his vision of success. For most of their marriage, Will and Jada were working towards the same things. They were unified in their goals and working as a unit, but that was now fractured. That was a difficult one for me. Yeah. When you stopped clapping when I did things in the exterior world that were great. And I can completely understand Jada's perspective here since she no longer wanted to live for someone else's idea of a good life. The rest of this 2018 conversation was a lot of fluff, if I'm being honest, about how Will and Jada's relationship was fractured, but they came together where now they have no desire to control each other. They don't think of themselves as married, but rather as a partnership. Will and I have decided to even throw away the concept of marriage. We don't even call ourselves married, married anymore. anymore. Yeah. That they will always love each other no matter what, and that there are no more deal breakers or conditions on their love for each other. But they did not address August Alsina during this conversation, even though this entanglement had happened back in 2015. For this, we need to go to the now infamous Red Table Talk episode from 2020, where Jada brought herself to the table to address August recent comments where he talked about his relationship with Jada. There are a lot of memes that came out of this conversation, primarily because of Will's dead inside look and Jada's insistence on using the word entanglement. Yeah, and then I got into an entanglement with August. That's what I said. An entanglement? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A relationship. Yes, it was a yeah. relationship. Absolutely. But here are the moments that really stood out to me. I just wanted to feel good. Mm -hmm. It had been so long mm -hmm. since I felt good. Mm -hmm. And it was really a joy to just help heal somebody. But the part that really surprised me was about Jada's perspective on this transgression. I feel like that husband, like I'm with you at the press conference. <laughs> I'm that husband, I'm with, now I gotta be with you at the press conference. <laughs> while you like to tell the world uh, about your transgressions. <laughs> well, like, I love, I love my baby. I'm gonna stand by my baby no matter what. Well, you know, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely understand mm -hmm. um, why it would look that way or feel that way, but I actually don't look at it as a transgression at all. Through that particular journey, I learned so much mm -hmm. about myself and was able to really confront a lot of emotional immaturity, mm -hmm. emotional insecurity, mm -hmm. and I was really able to do some really deep healing. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that Will uses levity to draw attention to what he's feeling because he can't just come out and say that he feels embarrassed and emasculated by her cheating on him. And Jada's response is that, well, I understand why you feel that, but I didn't do anything wrong because I'm justified in my desires because of the healing that I needed to do. And later, Will goes on to say, I don't want to go through this no more. Yeah, no, I don't yeah, either. Yeah, I'm gonna get you back first. And then you gonna get me back. I think you got me back. <laughs> I think you <laughs> I think we're good on that, okay? <laughs> Okay, that might, that's probably true. It's interesting because the two of them are laughing and joking about a bad marriage. But to me, it seems like the two of them are up a river without a paddle, primarily because they've lost their definition of what a marriage means to the two of them. If we refer back to the conversation from 2018, which seemed to be a solid deconstruction of their marriage, it seems like every brick was taken out. And it seems to me personally that the two of them haven't built it all back to a place where they're clear with each other 
about what being married is going to mean for them in the future and what they owe each other. And this brings us back to the slap incident. Will laughed at the joke, but Jada did not. And before we knew it, Will was charging up to the stage and exerting control over a comedian doing his job. And despite his insistence on never cursing in his music or in his marriage, he was now yelling obscenities. Will was clearly dysregulated. And no matter what Jada may have said to him between his laugh and his walking up to the stage, Will alone is responsible for what he did that night. But what I found surprising was that while Will was crying after the incident, it wasn't Jada, but rather Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry comforting him. And this disengagement from Will was kind of matched in her behavior and messaging after the incident as well. So maybe what Jada thinks is that this incident was yet another instance of Will and his ego and didn't want anything to do with it after years of playing into Will's vision of their life. After the incident, Denzel Washington shared what he and Will talked about. He said that the two prayed together and that he said to him that it's when you're at the top that the devil comes for you. Will mentioned this during his acceptance speech. Now, not being Christian myself, whenever I hear the word devil, I envision the boogeyman coming after me. But I thought a lot more about this sentence since Denzel Washington is honestly one of the wisest people in Hollywood. More on that another time. But the way I understand it is that the devil is a personification, let's say, for everything that is negative inside you. Like jealousy, anger, desire for violence, or even a desire to exert control over someone who says something to your wife that you don't like. But why does the devil or that side of you come out when you're at the top? It's when you're at the top that you're the most blind to your own capacity of doing terrible things. How many times have we seen people start off as humble and down to earth and then they see success and turn into the worst versions of themselves? But Will Smith has been famous for a long time and the reason fans have loved him and been with him for so long is because he has maintained his grounded sense of self throughout his fame. So I don't think it's just about Will being at the top because Will has been at the top for many years. But I think that in this instance, Will has lost his sense of grounding. By his own admission, Will Smith has said that he draws a lot of stability and strength from his marriage. There wasn't a day in my life that I wanted anything other than being married and having a family. Wow. From like, well, thank the good Lord. Literally five years old, I was picturing what my family would be. Wow. I read something when we first got together that the most successful men in history have been married. Right. Right? Right. And for me, I knew that I would squander my life if I was running around. Yeah. Right. Okay. The way my mind works, I can only excel for a woman. Aww. Like, I can't... <laughs> Men are like that, though. Yeah. I think the I think women are are true motivators yeah. for men. And the one thing that I think has has been the greatest motivator and asset for me with you is your absolute refusal to accept anything from me other than the best that I could possibly be. Right, and vice versa. And for many years, Jada and Will were on the same page, aiming for the same mission. And that synergy is what kept him emotionally stable and professionally precise. But Jada and he seem to be on different planes now. While this independence has given Jada a new clarity on her life, it seems to have shaken Will to the core. And maybe now we're seeing Will not at his highest, but at his lowest, completely unclear on what the mission is. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm often blown away by how writing these videos makes me see myself in the people that I'm analyzing. And in this case, I think there are a lot of lessons about marriage, relationships with your traumatic past, and relationship with children tucked into this one story about a man slapping someone else. And honestly, that's the whole point of this channel. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.